Eric was kind enough to send me a professional copy of Network Miner. I've previously done a video on the free version, but in this video I want to focus on a few of the extras that you get with Network Miner Professional. So with no further ado, I'll show you some of these extra features. I'll use OS X for the first section of the video and then move the windows in the second section. Here recently I've been playing around with getting Network Miner to run on OS X using Mono. I've already installed Mono on this system, so I'm not showing that particular part. Eric has a blog post about getting everything up and running, and I'm going to show you a few workarounds for getting around the problem of being able to do a capture on a non-Windows system. Now, this particular workaround I'm going to show should only work with Network Miner Professionals, as I understand it, because only Network Miner Professionals supports the PCAP over IP functionality. However, as far as just getting Network Miner up and running in Mono to look at pre-saved PCAPs, that should work just fine with the instructions I'm showing as well. Eric was kind enough to send me a copy of Network Miner Professional to play around with. First thing we'll do is fire up Network Miner Professional. You see I'm using sudo and using Mono and pointing it to the path of the Network Miner EXE. Since I haven't logged in using sudo for a bit. It's um, asking for my password. It takes a little bit for the GUI to come up and um, I put some indications that uh, the GUI is not as stable as it possibly could be in mono or underneath OS X, but it seems to function for the most part. Now if I was to try to actually capture something, you see my interfaces are listed, but if I try to start it up, it doesn't function. Now luckily in Network Miner Professional, there's a workaround to this. We can use receive PCAP over IP. Tell it what port to listen on and uh, you could use SSL if you have a version of a uh, Netcat that supports SSL. I'm just going to be using a, the standard Netcat so I won't be able to use that option. I'll hit start receiving and I'm going to switch over to another terminal window. In that terminal window I've done a few things already. For one, I've changed directory into applications Wireshark app contents resources bin. The reason I've done this is there's a tool called DumpCap that comes with Wireshark and you can do a ton of things with it. Uh, mostly it's meant for just dumping captures out to a PCAP file without necessarily having to load, load up the GUI and such. Um, for my functionality here, what I'm doing is I am telling it to capture on the interface EN0 and I want to write everything out to stand it out. Then I'm essentially typing it all into Netcat and sending it to local host host uh, port 57012. So let me go ahead and start that up and hopefully that's actually going to function properly. There we go. As you see back here the capture is actually happening. At this point the functionality should be very much like you would expect from Network Miner doing a standard capture. That's it for this particular section of the video. Since I covered the basics of doing a PCAP over IP capture in the OS X section of this video, I'll cover a few of the other extra features that are built into Network Miner Professional. One of them is port independent protocol identification. And if I understand this properly, essentially it doesn't use the port to identify well the protocol, which is pretty much just restating the name. So let's say you're having um, communications with a web server that's not using the standard port 80 you'd still be able to identify that the protocol is HTTP by the contents of the packets. Probably something similar for, let's say, uh, email traffic on port 25 if someone decides to run an SMTP server on something other than port 25. I can't really easily show that particular feature, so I'll move on to uh, showing exporting to a CSV file so you can import it to pretty much any other kind of tool, database, what have you. So let me do a quick capture. I'll go ahead and choose my wireless interface on this particular machine. Capture some packets. Uh, I'm going to sort by operating system, do a sort and refresh. And I've shown all these features in a previous video of mine. If you want more information on using the basics of a network miner, especially the free version, go check it out. I'll provide a link someplace on this page. Let me stop this and go ahead and export this out as a comma separated value file. 
and I'll say let's save out the hosts and I'll put it in a little folder called Adrian's data and let's just call it hosts test now if I was to go actually go look at that file let's see what's in it now we have a nice little CSV file we can import into other tools with the IPs collected and various information about them you can see the OS detected and so forth now you can kind of replicate this with the free version if you use other tools what they can do is they can look at the control right here and export data out of it but it's a little bit more painful doing things that way another option you may have noticed in the uh, CSV file was that it identified where in the world it thinks that particular IP address is using a, a GeoIP database now you can kind of do this with the free version but you'd have to export the data and something and use another tool to look at the IP addresses and try to figure out what country they're in another option you have is host coloring support so um, let's say I wanted to find one of these particular machines out there on the internet or, or sorry let me see I want to find other frames that are associated with that particular traffic I can right click on one say select host color and uh, I'll just select this light blue for no real reason I go in the frames and it should highlight the particular frames that are associated with the one I chose to give a color to also in some of the other places like parameters and uh, other tabs it will also highlight those um, unfortunately it doesn't seem to highlight images so let's say you wanted to only see the stuff that's going to and from I don't know let's say Google it may or may not show you that um, actually for that particular demo let me stop this for a second and import some sample data that I've already uh, captured in this case using Wireshark the lovely thing about PCAP files is you can take them from one tool to another tool that uses the libpcap format and do what you want with them this is one I actually captured in Wireshark and you'll see there's a whole lot of images in that including some of me and if I was to do highlighting on that I want to look through here for let's see if I can find something that'd be good to highlight uh, Google Scholar we're looking for something um, hoping to find something image related Oh, this may or may not actually help me, but um, for giggles, I'll just choose one of the Google ones, and I'll highlight it in green. Go over here to frames. I should see some green ones in there someplace. Although I may have caused some confusion by doing an import after a capture. and apparently it actually does highlight the images so I was wrong earlier you can actually see what images were served up from that particular IP address so actually that's a uh, better than what I said earlier in the video I'd done a previous test and I must have screwed it up in some way but that would be host highlighting in a nutshell another thing you can do is a little bit of command line scripting and you'll see I've done it a couple of times here as a test essentially you can import a pcap file all over the command line and send it out the output out to some directory where you put all those CSV files. The nice thing with this is you can have like a batch job automatically doing this for you. So it can be good and convenient. Now on my particular box there's some little issue with network miner that causes it to crash. However, when I actually go out and look inside that directory, I seem to have CSV files. Not all of them are necessarily populated, but they are indeed there. So if I was to go into Aiden's data, you see there's a whole lot of CSV files in there. Hosts, for whatever reason, seems to be cleared of data. I don't know why. However, some of the other ones actually do appear to have data in them. Also, it did assemble the files. If I drilled down deep enough, you would see files or images and uh, HTML and text that it was able to 
put back together for me. So if you have like PCAP files that are automatically generated on a certain time basis and you want to have them automatically exported and the data collected, using the command line features of Network Miner Professional might be a good thing. Also, and this is another thing I really can't show in the video easily, uh, my understanding there's some speed improvements. Um, my understanding the command line version is going to be faster than the GUI version, so if you're going to be automating something, you might as well be using it anyway. And uh, that's all the main features I wanted to show in Network Miner Professional. As usual, I like to give you a few links for further research at the end of my videos. Now, since I've moved from using the Flash, you'll have to either go to my website to be able to directly link to these or just type them in. Of course, there's the Network Miner website where you can download both the free version of Network Miner and order the professional version. If you want more details about how to set up PCAP over IP, Eric has a blog post about it. He also has a blog post about using the command line interface version of Network Miner, so go check it out. I'm going to be sending him bug reports on any little issues I find, and hopefully that little problem I had in the video will be uh, fixed here very shortly. If you want more information on what Network Miner can do, besides just these more advanced features, things like OS detection and parsing various types of uh, network traffic like FTP, SMB, and HTTP, and extracting files, go check out my original video on Network Miner. And all that core functionality is also in the free version. Thanks for your time.